good morning. Welcome to Victory Baptist Church this morning. Let's all go to songbook, stand and turn to page 162. Page 162. It's good to see everybody here today. Um, as we go to the Lord in prayer, let's uh, remember all the prayer requests made mention here today in the bulletin. Uh, all the prayer requests mentioned uh, in uh, Sunday school this morning. Uh, play, pray for the choir as we sing. Uh, it's good to have Charles Vaughn with us today. He'll be preaching. 
I'll pray for him as he'd be preaching. Um, any prayer request? Kristen, can you remember Charles uh, with his breathing still bothering like I've taken back to Dr. Long? Remember, a lot of people was traveling this week, so just pray for them as they travel. Um, Mr. Combs, will you come pray for us? Hey. Let us pray. Our precious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to be in your house today to give you worship, you, for all the things that you've uh, done for us. Thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. Thank you for that saving grace that you allow each and every one of us to have. Be with the pastors the out of town this weekend. Be with those that are traveling. Give them safeties. Remember our missionaries around the world, our servicemen. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything that <clears throat> we do here today. We honor you and give you thanks. In your precious holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Let's all stand up and turn around and fellowship as the choir comes down. There will be no big children's church today. There will be little children's church, but no big children's church. I usually only sing this song on Mother's Day. Um, it's called Just Be There. But I had a request to sing it, and it's really good for any time. It's about, um, it's written from a mother to her child saying, just be there. When I finally make it home, I want to see you there in heaven. But as Christians, we're burdened with the salvation of the lost in general. So if you have a co-worker or a lost family member or anybody that you're just burdened down for this morning, this song is for you. And if you're lost and you haven't made that decision yet that you want to make Jesus your Lord and Savior, please hear this plea this morning to choose him. You won't regret it. you more with each day passing by. We share joy, we share pain through the sunshine and the rain. I can't believe it's time to say goodbye. I don't know what the future brings you. That you'll keep heaven as your goal Because I taught you how to pray And I made sure you knew the way So remember my request before you go And just be traveling but every place you go Jesus has been and when you find you've made a turn forgetting what you've learned you may have to start all over again it's not an The trials of your faith will make you strong. Enduring danger, unaware, he won't allow what you can't bear. So I'm praying that your faith will lead you home. And just
Charles Bone with us this morning, so you come on and preach to us. It is a joy that I'm here this morning, and I do hope and pray that you'll be much in prayer for Brother Rick as they're traveling, and it's a joy. I miss, I miss the pastor. When the pastor's not here, it makes a difference. It, uh, it does make a difference, and I, I, the pastor is the pastor, amen, amen. and uh, the pastor is God's man to lead and carry for the work of the church. That's, that's the pastor's calling. And uh, I tell you what, you need the pastor, and I miss when a pastor's not behind me or in front of me when I'm preaching. But just remember Brother Rick today, remember Sister Debbie, remember those that are traveling up and down the roads. And as that song asked the question, will you be there? Will you be there? That's a question that we need to ask ourselves. Will you be there? The Lord willing tonight... I'll be bringing a message about uh, problems and trials and tribulations. And uh, they are problems. They are trials. They are tribulations. We all go through them. And uh, we need the help of the Lord Jesus Christ as we go through these valleys, as we go down these paths, as we go down these roads. We need the Lord Jesus Christ to help us. And I'm so glad that he didn't promise that... uh, there would never be any more problems. We wouldn't have any problem, but he did promise he'd be there with us in the midst of those problems. I would rather be able to serve the Lord Jesus Christ knowing that he's walked with me through those problems and he was there when I needed him as I went through those problems than to say, well, I just had a happy-go life and everything is well and good. Hey, I'm glad if you did. I pray that you do. But I tell you, most of us won't. <laughs> most of us won't, and we're going to need the Lord. So come back tonight at 6 o'clock. Remember the service is tonight at 6. Prayer meeting that Wednesday. Remember the prayer meeting. Be in your place. Amen. God just wants us to be faithful. Amen. Let's open our Bibles this morning to the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 2. I have preached from this passage several times, and I'm going to move this. It gets in my way. Uh, down, there we go. I like to see you eyeball to eyeball. I've got glasses now. I have to look a little harder. But when I'm preaching, I like to look at your face. And because a lot of times I can tell, well, he no, I didn't like that what he said. And then maybe I can say it again. And, uh, you know, but God's so good as uh, preachers. You say, now listen, it won't scare me if you raise your hand and say, preach, preacher. I, you know, I like to try to preach. It won't scare me a bit. And uh, I hope and pray that the Lord will take the message and uh, that we'll hear his word. Uh, And so this morning, I'd like for us to open our Bibles to 2 Kings chapter number 2. We'll read a few verses. And if you would, I'd like to ask you to stand with me, please, as we read uh, the scriptures. And for those of you who are listening by the radio, we hope and pray that... uh, Things will be well with you today, and the message will bless your heart. If you know not the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, today you will hear his word, come to him, and be saved. Second Kings chapter number 2 and verse 1, the Bible said, And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Elijah said unto Elisha, Terry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. The sons of the prophets that were Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord would take away thy master from thy head today? He said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets that were Jericho came to Elisha, said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. 
Elijah said unto him, uh, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they two went on, and fifty men of the sons of the prophets went, stood to view afar off, and they stood by Jordan. Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. They were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. Came to pass that when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked the hard thing, nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass as they still went on and taught that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parting both asunder. And Elijah went up by where went to heaven. Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel. The horsemen thereof, and he saw him no more. He took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up his own man, also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And Elisha, and he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when also smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. When the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. They came to meet him, and they bowed themselves to the ground before him. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, please take your word this morning. Apply it, Lord, to our hearts. Apply it, Lord, to our lives. Lord, may we preach thy word this morning. God, may we be a blessing to thy people. We pray that you might take your words, that you might help us, that we might, Lord, live and be better servants of thine. Thank you now, Lord, for your blessings. We do pray for the pastor this morning, his wife, and those that are traveling. Lord, we pray those that are sick, those that are not able to be in thy house, just, Lord, extend your arm of mercy. Help each and every one of those. In the precious name of all the names, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Now, I have preached from this passage of Scripture before. Probably, uh, years gone by, I probably preached a message or two here from this passage of Scripture. And, uh, but today, I want to look at it a little bit different, uh, looking at it as we being equipped for the Lord's service, uh, that we learn some things that Elisha was applied in his life, we applied unto our lives, that we might become better servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, now, while this was taking place, we see the first verse said, it came to pass what the Lord would take up Elijah. Now, we know that here is a man of God that has been greatly used of God, we see that he came upon the scene when there was a natural, a national turmoil in the land of Israel. And Elijah stepped forth and he said, it's not going to rain for three and a half years. James tells us that Elijah was a like man of us having the same passions that we had, but he prayed unto God. He walked with God. He lived for God and God blessed him. Now today we need to learn to walk with God and to live for God that we can become blessed of God. You know the story of how <coughs> Elijah, how he uh, uh, prayed the fire down from heaven. Now, you know, there was the three years that they had no rain. And then one day God spoke to Elijah and he said, present yourself to Ahab and tell him it's going to rain. Now, but he said before that, he said, let's make and let's have uh, discern with this nation who is God and who is going to follow the world or the God of Baal. Uh, who, which God are you going to follow. If God be God, let's follow God. And today we have come in our nation to the place <coughs> that we are going to have to decide if God be God, then let us follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he is the flesh. Uh, the Bible says in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Uh, and all things were made by Him. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ by faith spoke uh, out of nothing became the world. Uh, and He is the Creator. And in John chapter 1 and verse 14 it says, And the 
uh, God became flesh uh, and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Uh, now Jesus Christ uh, is God incarnated or Jehovah God is Jesus Christ the creator of all things. And we as Elijah, we must come to ourselves and we must Choose who you will serve, uh, the God. That's all through Scripture. God told Moses, uh, tell the people to choose. Uh, God will never hold a 38 at your head and say, uh, you must serve me. Uh, he'll never hold a knife to your throat and say, uh, you <coughs> must serve me. Uh, but as he told Moses, he said, today uh, I offer you in the one hand life. Uh, I offer you in the other hand death. Uh, and the and the way that we make our choices uh, will decide who and how our end will be. Now, my mind is going in Portuguese right now. Uh, uh, th this month, uh, uh, this past month, I've had 40 years of trying to preach the gospel in the land of Brazil. And I've been trying to preach in Portuguese, and uh, I couldn't remember that word I was looking for. And the Lord just finally found it. So if I spit out a, a, a word in that sounds a little bit like Spanish, it's not. It, it's Portuguese. And, and so uh, I, I hope and pray that it'll leave me alone for a little bit. Uh, it's bad when you forget English. It's bad when you forget Portuguese. It's bad when you forget them both. And uh, so this morning, but anyway, God uh, uh, told Moses, he said, in my one hand, I offer you life. In my other hand, I offer you death. Which choice will you make? He said that the skies and the rock will stand uh, as a testimony. There was Joshua in the book of Joshua, in the last chapter, as he was beginning to die, before he was dead, he said, choose you this day uh, whom you will serve. And he drawed a line in the sand, uh, and he said, but as for me uh, and my house, we will serve the Lord. Brethren, we need today, uh, we need people we need men of God that'll say, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And if you look at the Lord in that verse of Scripture, you'll see that L is capital, O is capital, R is capital, and D is capital. And that stands for the Jehovah God, the creator of all mankind, and he is Lord of lords, he's king of kings, and one day he's coming back, not as the slain lamb on Calvary, but he's coming back to rule and to reign in the righteousness. Now it's time that we, as Christian men, that I'm going to serve the Lord with my family. Now we'll give an account unto God. I'll give an account of God as a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'll give an account of God one day for this message that I'm bringing here this morning. I'll give an account of God as if I loved my wife, as the Lord loved his church and gave himself for it. I'll give an account as a dad of how my children were brought up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. I'll give an account to God one day for all that I've done in this body, not for salvation because that was settled on the old rugged cross when Jesus died for my sins and the sins of the world. And he says, come unto me and I will in no wise cast you out. I came to the Lord Jesus, repented of my sin, received him as my Lord and Savior. And from that day to eternity, I will be born again, not for the goodness that I have done, but because of the amazing grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and his blood that was shed on the old rugged cross. Elijah said, choose you this day who you'll serve. Elijah did. And we know that the people saw, they said, oh, it is God. And they served him. And the prophets of Baal were killed. And we see that Jezebel said, hey, tomorrow at this time, Elijah, I'll have your head on a platter. Hey, we can do great things, but there's something about death we fear. 
something about, hey, I, I know when I die, and I really believe the second that I die or the time my death comes, I believe the Lord's going to give me grace. Yeah. I don't have it right now because I don't believe I'm going to die. But I remember back about 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago now, it was in 1991, so that's how many years ago, I don't remember now. But uh, we heard a noise, and now all this noise came in the front of the house, and I heard Peggy screaming. And I run back in through the living room to see what was going on. There was a great old big tall guy. He looked like he was about this tall. He had his hand across the program, and he had a 38 in the hand. He was walking through the house. All she could do was scream. And he backed us up into the bathroom where the guy was fixing our shower that day. He was putting in some kind of shower door thing in there. And he said, where's your money at? I said, I ain't got none. He said, well, you're American. Where's your money and your gold? I said, I ain't got neither. Like Peter and John. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give you. I'll give you the name of Jesus. And he put us in there, and after a while, he kept asking questions. They went through the house ransacking this and ransacking that and trying to find silver and gold, which they didn't find. But I remember as he stood there at the bathroom door, and the other three others was going through everything, and he had a gun looking at it. I began to sing, Preciosa Grasa, Qui Salvo. That in English is amazing grace. How sweet the sound. You know why? Because I was in a problem and I was facing a 38, and it wasn't the first time I faced a 38 looking down the barrel the wrong way of a gun. It wasn't the first time. Hope is the last. <laughs> I don't look forward to that. But you know, during that time, the Lord God of all grace, the God of all comfort is talked about in 2 Corinthians. He gave me the grace that I needed in that hour. And I really believe the time, that it's time for that old death angel to come by my way. And I don't believe he's going to come. I believe I'm, the Lord's going to come back and we're going to be changed and caught up with him. Yeah. But if he doesn't come back, you know, before that door comes to me, he'll give me the grace that I need to walk through that valley. And Elijah, he, hey, there was John the Baptist. You remember John the Baptist? Jesus said there was not a greater man born of woman than John the Baptist. But John preached the truth and he was in prison. Because he was in prison because he preached the truth. He sent one of his messenger boys and one of his preacher boys and said, hey, you go down there and ask Christ. You go ask Jesus. Say, Jesus, are you the Messiah? Jesus, are you the Christ? Are you the one sent of God to take away? John had already preached, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. But he said, hey, are you that one or should we look for another? Tell you, there's some things when it comes down, you begin to realize that money value don't mean a whole lot of things. There'll be times in your life when you go in that doctor's office and he tells you that dreadful thought, well, you got the big C, you know. And then he'll come back and he'll push you down that long aisle. And your husband, your wife, your mom, your kids will walk with you as far as they can walk. And then they'll come to those doors and you'll flap through that door. And there won't be nobody but you and the Lord. You'll realize then that there are some things that are more important than the monetary value. You'll realize that the eternal things of God and everlasting life <coughs> will take more importance than all these mediocre things that we have in our lives. And oh, I believe that as Elijah and John sent there, and he went there, and Jesus, he just gave the word. He said, the blind, they're seeing. The deaf, they're hearing. But you know the last statement he made? He said, the gospel is being preached. The word of God is being preached. And when John heard that, he was excited and he said, that's him. 
That's him. A few days later, they cut John's head off. Elijah, run. Jezebel said, you're going to die. Elijah, run. He run three or four days, and he found himself in a cave, and the angel shook him and woke him up and said, Elijah, what doest thou here? He said, well, Jezebel was going to kill me, and I run, and I just may as well die. <laughs> now, if he may as well die, why didn't he stay there and let Jezebel do the job? He didn't want to die. That's how, like that preacher was saying that day. He said, all we're going to have them raise your hand. And everybody raised their hand, except one dear man on the front. He'd done it two or three times. He said, sir, don't you want? He said, oh, I thought the way this preacher was getting ready, ready to get a load to go now. <laughs> He's ready to go, but not now. You know what I mean? <laughs> and Elijah said, I may as well die. And the angel touched him and said, hey, rise and eat. You've still got some more jobs to do. Rise and eat. And so we see that Elijah rose and he eat. God told Elijah, said, I want you to go down that road. And he says, when you go down the road, you're going to see a young man. He's plowing. There's 12 yoke of oxen. They're plowing this field. He said, when you pass that group, there's one man. His name is Elisha. He says, when you pass by, he said, I want you to take the mantle. The mantle is a cloak. He says, when you pass by, I want you to just throw it over top of him. Now, we see that that's a type of the Holy Spirit. We see that's a type of the power of God upon his life. And when that was thrown upon Elisha, we see that Elisha, he felt the call of God. Dr. Schottler said he felt the call of God just to be a little water boy. All he did for the next several years was walk with Elijah. Elijah would do all the preaching. Elijah would do all the ministry. Elisha would just carry him the water. He would just be with him. He would just be learning the things of God. But the mantle was upon him. But we do find that when the mantle was thrown upon Elisha, we see that there was something happened in his life. His life was changed. He was plowing the yoke of oxen. And as he was plowing the yoke of oxen, when the mantle of God was placed upon him, it's a type to also of salvation. His life was changed. The Bible says that he took those oxen and he killed those oxen and he made a big shuhashku. Now that's barbecue. He made a big barbecue. They ate. He fed all of his neighbors and friends with the killing of the beef, his oxen. The Bible says that he took the yoke that he was plowing with and he cut it up and he made firewood that he used to cook the oxen. So what was Elisha doing? He was burning his past. He was saying that life is now over. I now am become the servant of the man of God and I now will give my life for the rest of my life that I might serve the Lord Jesus Christ. It's good, brethren, to see Sister Buell and Brother James. Now, I know I, 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 some of you are newer to me, and I may not know you as well as I used to. or We hadn't got to meet that long. But I remember as a teenager. See, when I came to Henderson back in 1967, I was a teenager. I was a young one. Got my driver's license even back then. And some of the good old folks... My brother Macy. Yeah, I remember these fellas. Brother Andrew. Brother Odell Winters. I remember them gentlemen. But you know what's a blessing? To come back 40 years later 
45 years later, see Brother Andrew sitting in his place at the church. See Brother Beulah and Brother James still serving the Lord. Hey, that's a blessing. We need people today that say, hey, I'll be that man. I'll be that person. You may not have a million dollars. You may not have a big house. God don't want the big house. God don't want your million dollars. God wants you to be faithful. God wants you, uh, as the man of the Holy Spirit fell upon Elisha that day, uh, as we hear the word of God, uh, and the Holy Spirit of God uh, convicts us of our sins uh, and births us into his family, uh, he gives each one of you and I a talent. Uh, you have a talent. I have a talent. Uh, it doesn't mean we're better than the other. Uh, he gave one Three, uh, he gave one five, two and five and one. Uh, and then we see that he went away, he came back. Uh, the man with the five, he called him in. He said, I've worked and I got five more. The man with the two said, I've worked and I got two more. The Lord didn't say to the man with two, because you didn't have five, uh, you're condemned. Uh, he said, but you have been faithful. Amen. There's one thing America needs today. It's for the Christian people to be faithful Amen. to the Word of God. Just be that light shining for the Lord Jesus Christ. Just be that lighthouse. The lighthouse just sits there on the hill. It doesn't do that much. All it does is just sit there and shines. That's all it does. But because of its faithfulness, we see that the ships, they are saved from coming in and lives being lost. Oh, that we might be the light ships, the lighthouse, that the ships of the people that are storming on the raging sea of life, that they might come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, uh, and we see that Elisha started walking with God. And now we come to the last day that Elijah and Elisha are walking together. We come to the last day. Now we see that as we read the scriptures, I'll not read them again. I'll just make mention of them. We see that, and it came to pass as the day that the Lord would take up Elisha. Elijah, rather, is coming to pass that we are now living in the perilous days. I believe that we're living in the latter days. I believe we're living in the midnight hour for the second hand to, to hit the hour. And the Lord says, go fetch the bride of my son and bring him home. I believe that's how close we are. It could come today before I even finish the message. Praise God. If it does, you get a lot of us out of a lot of problems. But if, it, if he doesn't come back for another five years, if he doesn't come back for another ten years, but hey, we just need to be faithful to the Lord Jesus. And we're going to see this in Elisha. He said, uh, he went from Gilgal, and, and I preached this, and I just, I'll just mention it fast. These cities are important to Hebrew people, to the Jewish people. Gilgal, that was when it, they had wandered for 40 years into the wilderness, and now that uh, it's time that God's going to keep his word. God keeps his word. Amen. God keeps his promises. It may not be when you and I think time's for it right. I like that song that the Rochesters used to sing. They said, uh, even four days late, God, the Lord was still on time. Amen. You know, God's still, he's, he's on time. It might not be our timing, but he's on time. And the children of Israel had wandered for 40 years because of sin. The old folks, they had to die out. But now we've got a new younger generation. Eli, uh, uh, Joshua has picked up the mantle. Joshua 1, Moses, my servant is dead, but let's go on. Let's serve the Lord. And so Joshua goes and he serves the Lord. And he said, hey, God's promises is here. We're going into the promised land. We've wandered for 40 years. We've had our problems. We've had our trials. We've had our temptations. Hey, brethren, you're going to have some problems. You're going to have some temptations. They may be physical. They may be financial. They may be with your family, but we have our problems. But I'm so glad 
that the God of all gods, the true and only God, Jesus Christ, says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And there at Gilgal, as they started to walk across the water, let's just say this is the river. They're back here, and they need to go over the promised land. Joshua says, sanctify yourselves. That's not a Pentecostal word. That's a Bible word. Sanctify means just clean it up. Just clean it up. Wash it out. Now, in Brazil, we don't have screens on the windows. It gets hot. It gets hot. I finally made some, so it helped a little bit. But in Brazil, it's hot and it's humid. And we have a certain bug about this long. And he's probably about this wide. And he looks like our roach bugs, but he's a big one. He's big. They get about this long. And they have wings and they fly. And a certain time of the year, them bugs, they just, lights on, they just let fly right in because you ain't got no screens. And I had a cup that I always used. My glass, I, I, I drink a lot of water. And that was my water cup. And so I would have my water cup there. And, but did you know, it was an aluminum cup. It was a nice cup, big cup. My boys didn't mess with it. One day I went to get my cup, and one of them flying roaches had done flew right into my cup. Now, do you think that I would put that cup under my water? We, we, we filter all our water. We don't just drink water from the filter. You don't get sick. You filter your water. Now, do you think I'd go to my filter and just pour that water in it and just drink it up? Not so. No, no, no. I'm not that crazy. <laughs> I took that cup and I washed it with everything I could find. I poured alcohol in it. I poured Clorox in it. I poured everything in the world I could find. But I cleaned that cup out and I still used it. Now when we get dirty with sin, when we walk not according to God's word, when we get mad and say that thing we ought not to say, you ain't never done that, have you? When we sin, I'm so thankful for God's word that he'll take it and he'll wash us. <laughs> and the blood of Jesus Christ, the Bible says in 1 John, cleanses us <laughs> from all unrighteousness. I'm glad of that. But you know, there's another word in that verse of Scripture. <laughs> that word says, purifies us. <laughs> and takes all of it out. It purifies us and it cleanses us. And Joshua said, purify yourselves. Cleanse yourselves. Because we're going over. So there at Gilgal, they take... He says, you take one member. How many tribes of Israel were they? Twelve. Twelve. He said, you take one man from each tribe. You go down into the river. God rolled back the waters. First of all, the priest stood in it with the word of God. The waters rolled back. He said, you take 12 stones from this side, place them in the river. You take 12 stones out. And as you walk over, you place them on this side. The river's behind now. So they've come through the 40 years. They've come through. The stone was placed in the water. The water covered it back up. When we receive Christ as Lord and Savior, the waters of sin are rolled back. Peter says, You have become lovely stones, fitly joined together. It's like these bricks fitly make these walls. We fitly join together. The water rolls back. We're cleansed. And then he says, those 12 stones you've taken out of the river, he says, you put them on this side. Now what's that for? <laughs> because one day your children and your grandchildren are going to look at those stones and they say, what meaneth these stones? And he says, you're going to say, that's what God did for us. 
That's what God did for us. He brought us through the tribulations, the trials. He saved our souls. He forgave our sins uh, not to ever be remembered again. Uh, and then he said, uh, I've left you with a rock. Uh, I've left you with a testimony uh, that your children and your grandchildren uh, can see Christ in your life uh, and they can say, this is what God has done for you. I'll never finish this message this morning, so let me just say a couple of things that needs to be said. When you turn your back upon God, when you walk away from God and you say, it's just not worth it anymore, I'm tired, I'm tired, it's just not worth it. That memorial on the other side of being saved, your kids and your grandkids He's going to look and say, well, dad won't faithful, mom won't faithful. I'm not going to be faithful. Amen. And your grandkids is the ones that, as we say in Brazil, pago pato, the ones that says they're going to pay for the turkey. They're going to pay for it because of us not being faithful. They went from Gilgal. They went from Gilgal to Bethel. Bethel, Elisha, stay here. No, no, I'm going with you. No, you stay here. I'm going to Bethel. What's Bethel mean? You know what Bethel means? Beth, El. El means God. Beth means in Hebrew, house of. House of God they went to. After they were saved, they went to the house of God. I believe a person that won't go to the house of God, I question his salvation. Because the Bible says the Lord gave his life for the church. He loved the church. And if you don't love the church, there's something wrong. I'm not talking about the brick and the mortar and the wall. I'm talking about those that are born of God. First John 1 says, Ye who are born of God love the Father and love the ones that are also born of God. Amen. Now walking here this morning, I love you. I walked in a church last week in Indiana, and the pastor hugged me and said, Hey, preacher, I'm glad to see you back. I walked in churches in South Carolina. I walk in churches in Brazil. I walk in churches everywhere. And there's one thing that holds us all together, and it is the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. The love of Jesus Christ. I love you today because you were born of the Spirit and born of God. And oh, if you're not, you should, you can be. You should be and you can be yeah. born of God. So they went to the house of God. Brethren, we need to be faithful in the house of God. When you're not faithful, your neighbors say, oh, well, church is not important to them. Let's learn to be faithful. Just be faithful to God. Right. And then the third place he went to Jericho. Elisha, God saw me go to Jericho. Now you stay here. No, no, sir. I'm going in your presence. And this is what we need to learn. We need to learn to walk in the presence of the man of God. He said, I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be true. Now, what's Jericho in the Bible? Well, you remember I told you they crossed over the river? Well, after they crossed over the river, the first city they come to was called Jericho. Now, the cities back then probably had walls almost as wide as this auditorium here. The wall that went around Jericho City was probably as wide as this wall, maybe a little wider. I read somewhere they could run six chariots and have a chariot race around the top of it. That's pretty wide. That was their first battle. I mean, they just crossed the river. They just had the victory. They were shouting the victory. Hey, we crossed. I, uh, Forty years we've been, we've been wandering now. Hey, God's made us anew. We're in the promised land. Thank God we're saved. And then battle. Remember I told you about the battles? The battle was God told Joshua, do this. They did this, and on the seventh day, as they obeyed God, as they did what God said, and they walked around at the seventh time, and they shouted. The horns blew. 
and the walls fell flat. God gave the victory. God gave the victory in the battle. Why? Because they obeyed God. The Bible says in Hebrews that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God will give you the victory in your life. Maybe not the way you want victory, but the victory that he will be pleased with that will glorify his precious name. <laughs> tonight I'll be preached. Please come back. I, I got a message tonight. You won't hear it. I won't talk to the because it's time to stop. Ja, 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 it's time to stop. My watch says three minutes after. Uh, just give me five more minutes and I'm done. I, I, I'll finish it. Will you give me that five minutes? They won the battle because they obeyed God. In the next chapter, the next chapter is a person sinned in the camp. They were so happy that they had won the battle. They said, oh, we don't need all our armies. We just need a few men. Just go on up there and fight that battle. That'll be the easiest thing you've ever done. This was a small city, a small battle. They took their men up there and they were defeated. 36 or 38 people lost their lives. They died. Because one man had decided to disobey God. You remember I said we're a family? The church is a family? I remember one cold morning, it was so cold, and I was doing electrical work when I was in Bible school. And I'm a little short dude, and I was standing. The next is the top step on a ladder, and I was reaching up like this. The ground was froze, cold, and I was trying to nail a nail, put a wire in. And I come back and I hit that thing. I didn't curse. I won't say I didn't come close to it. But when I hit that thing, I almost fell off the ladder. But when I got off the ladder, I started saying, amazing grace, oh, God, help me. <laughs> Man, that thing, it felt like it was that big. <laughs> I hit that thing, and I mean, I told, my, I told the guys working for it, I said, Tom, I got to go home. I cannot work. It made me sick to my stomach. And I was so sick, I hit that. And I mean blood splattered everywhere. It wasn't one of them things, you know, the blood gets up under it. I mean, it was hard enough. I mean, I hit the nail. I hit it. The one I hadn't fell off the ladder, but God was taking care of me, I guess. It hurt so bad. It made me sick on my stomach. I had a headache. Ache and sin. And the body hurt. 36 people died because of it. When you say, oh, it don't matter what I say to offend somebody, <laughs> it does matter. They say sticks and stones may bake my bones, but words never hurt me. Biggest lie I ever told. <laughs> it hurts. You ever been hurt by somebody say something bad about you? Hey, I know people right now this morning that won't go back to church because somebody said something smart mouth in the church. And you'll never get that person back in church. You just don't be the one to say that, okay? One dear lady came to the pastor and said, Pastor, God's convicted me. I've said some bad things. He said, well, go get a, me a piece of board and a nail and a hammer. She went and got it. She said, I want you to nail 100 times. Put it in, put it in, take it out, put it in, take it out. Well, take it out. He said, now what do you see on that board? I see a board full of nail holes. He said, words you speak is like nails going into somebody. You say you're sorry, you pull them out, but the holes are still there. You get hurt, brethren. 
you get hurt. It's important how we fight our battles. They won the battle at Jericho, but in the next chapter they lost their battle. Here they are at Jericho. Elisha said, I'm going with you all the way. I'm going to keep on keeping on. I'm going on. So then they came back to the river. What river was it? Jordan. The same river it was they crossed. When they crossed into the promised land. They came to Jordan. Elijah was getting ready to go up. He goes up. But before he goes, he said, Elijah, what do you want? What is it do you want? What do you want today? What do you want today serving the Lord? What do you want today? Elisha said, all I want is the double portion. Oh, may we want the double portion of God in our lives. <laughs> Elijah, you know what his answer was? You have asked a hard thing. Well, that's, that's hard to do. Give me a double portion. <laughs> but he says, but if you see me when I go, <laughs> it'll happen. I mean, that was better than super bond. You couldn't have separated them now. But the Lord separated them. Elijah went up. On the way. My father host. He rents his clothes. Showing humility. Elijah, he's in the chariot. The same spirit of God that came upon Elisha and dwells you and I. The same spirit. Elisha picked it up. It was the same one that had fallen on him several years ago. He said, I'm following you to Jordan, which is a type of death. I'm following you all the way. He said, because you followed me all the way, I'm giving you the power. I'm giving it to you. So he walks back to Jordan. May I say this? I got to close. May I say this? At Jordan, there were 50 Sons of who? The prophets. Oh, that's church people. Oh. Yeah. That's people you think going to be helping you. That's the people who are supposed to be lifting you up, praying with you, for you, and going with you. It was the sons of the prophets that now one life should go now. Elisha took the mantle. He slapped the waters. And he said, where's the Lord God of Elijah? And I can hear, I can hear God say, son, I'm right here. Son, I'm right here. I'll not leave, I'll not forsake you. <laughs> and the water's open! <laughs> and from that day, read your Bible, study it. Go back, count the miracles of Elijah, count the miracles of Elisha. There were eight for Elijah. There were only seven for Elisha. Lord, did you lie? <laughs> nope. Elisha died. He lacked one. He lacked one, having the double portion. They buried Elisha in a tomb. <laughs> and you'll read that there was a war going on one day. And a soldier got killed. And they took that soldier and threw his body over into the cave. And when his body touched the bones of Elisha, life came back. God kept his promise. Even after death, God will keep his promise. Don't give up praying for your kids. Uh, don't give up praying for your grandkids. Uh, don't give up praying for your parents, for your loved ones. Keep on keeping on. Uh, be faithful and God will give the answer. Amen. Let's pray.
Lord, you know, didn't follow the outline, but I believe I preach, Lord, what you want us to have. Oh, God, speak to our hearts. Help us, touch us. Help us, Lord, to walk with thee. Give us the victory. Help us be faithful, Lord. In Jesus' name, with heads bowed and eyes closed. Is there one here say, Preacher, I've never had the mantle of salvation, never been saved. Would you pray for me? The only way I'll know how to pray for you is to slip your hands up and slip it down. Preacher, pray for me, anyone. I'll not embarrass you, but I will pray for you. Man, lady, child, teenager, not saved. Do you need to be saved? Is there one this morning who say, Preacher, I've been fighting the battle. I've been discouraged. I've fallen down. I've done something, said something that's not pleasing to God. Oh, preacher, would you and the good people of this church pray for me, please? If you want us to pray for you, slip your hand up, slip it down. I'll not embarrass you. I just want to pray for you. Anyone, thank you. You may take it down. Any others? Any others? I only trust him. Lord Jesus, you know the hearts of your people. You know our hearts. Lord, I lift my hand this morning asking that you help me. Pray that you'll help me, Lord. Give me the victory. Help me to be faithful. Help me to walk in your paths. Lord, for the others that raise the hand, Lord, would you touch those and help them? Thanking you, Lord Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen. We'll stand, please, and... God spoke to your heart and you need to come read it. What number, please? 200. Number 200, we'll just stand, we're saying the first stanza. God spoke to your heart and you need to come. Come every soul by sin oppressed. There's mercy with the Lord. And He will surely give you rest by trusting in His Word. Do you need to come? Oh, we trust Him all. We trust Him only trust him now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now. I want to thank each and every one of you this morning for your attention. Thank you for listening to the Word of God. Be faithful. Serve the Lord. And tonight we'll be back at 6. Remember the preacher, pray for him and his wife and family. And may the Lord bless you as you go forth and bring you back. And we'll close with a word of prayer. And I'll ask Brother James to dismiss us in prayer this morning.